guys, thank you for tuning in to another video. This week's video is going to be on negative amortization. So what does negative amortization actually mean? If you're into real estate, if you have a mortgage, maybe if you have a variable rate mortgage, or if you've been listening to the news or media lately, you've probably heard this term negative amortization thrown around. Now, most of you probably know what amortization is because it's a very common thing you go over when you're getting a mortgage, right? My amortization is 30 years. My amortization is 25 years. Or I want to have you know, a 20-year amortization and bump up my monthly payment. It's very straightforward with amortization. It's just the time that the loan is spread out over. Now, negative amortizations get a little more tricky. And if you're in a negative amortization scenario, here's some things that you may want to be aware of. Negative amortization is a financial term referring to the increase in the principal balance of a loan due to the failure to cover all of the interest on that loan. So let's give an example. If you have a interest payment of $3,000 a month on your loan and you're paying only $2,500 a month on that loan of interest, that means $500 is going to be tacked on to your principal balance of that loan. So basically your principal balance is growing and growing and growing because you're not covering the interest on your loan. For an example, again, Let's say you have a $400,000 mortgage. It's a variable rate mortgage. Your payment was $1,500 a month, which was covering interest only. Now your interest rates increased and your new interest payment due every month is $2,500. You're still only paying $1,500 a month, which means $1,000 a month is getting tacked on to your original principal balance. So you've got a one year variable rate mortgage and you're running at an interest deficit of $1,000 a month, your balance, your principal balance of your mortgage at the end of that one year term will now be $412,000 because you're running at an interest deficit of $1,000 a month over 12 months. What are ways that you can get out of a negative amortization scenario? Well, there's a few. You can increase your monthly payment so that you're covering your interest, maybe a little bit of interest and principal. So for the example we used before, if you're Monthly payment used to be $1,500 interest only. Now your interest is $2,500. You can increase your monthly payment to $2,500 and keep your principal balance the same. You could increase your monthly payment to $3,000 and pay all of your $2,500 in interest plus $500 off of your principal amount. You can also keep your negative amortization and extend amortization, your total loan amortization on renewal. So let's say you have a 10 year amortization left on your mortgage and you're, neg you're negatively amortized now because your monthly payment doesn't cover all your interest. Well, you can renegotiate, you can refinance that mortgage and spread out your amortization over 20 years now and keep your monthly payment the same. But now in this scenario, you'll likely be paying off all of your interest plus some principal, but you'll be extending the amortization of your mortgage. Third option, you can make a lump sum payment. So if you're negatively amortized, you can do this lump sum payment anytime you want, depending on your mortgage product. A lot of A lenders, AKA banks, will let you make lump sum payments of up to 10% of the mortgage balance. So this can be done at any time, but a lot of the time it may be done on renewal. So let's say you're negatively amortized, like in the situation I said before, your principal amount was 400,000, now it's 412,000 on renewal, you make that $12,000 lump sum payment and your principal balance is now back to $400,000. What are the downsides to being negatively amortized besides your balance growing and paying more money and in interest to the bank? Well, if you let that principal balance get too high, depending on what your loan to value ratio is, you could end up being underwater on your mortgage. Also, when your mortgage term is up and you go to requalify or refinance or renegotiate your term, your mortgage balance may be too high for you to qualify for, which could result in you having to sell your property. Now, this is really dependent on what your equity position is in your home. If you have a million dollar home and you had a $900,000 mortgage, which now has negatively amortized over the last two years of high rate environment, and now your mortgage balance is a million fifty, you're underwater on the mortgage, right? So you're gonna have to make a lump sum payment or basically you're underwater on your mortgage. Now, in a different scenario, if you had a million dollar home, you had a $100,000 mortgage, and you're now negatively amortized on that, 
and your mortgage now $105,000, right? If we're taking the same numbers, that doesn't really matter. It doesn't really affect you, right? Because you're still in such a strong equity position. You're like 10% loan to value. So this is really dependent on your position in the home. We don't see this first scenario, the former scenario happening that much in our market because like I've said in my past videos, a lot of people aren't over leveraged here. A lot of people don't have really high loan to value mortgages and our purchase price and house price here, median price is $500,000 for instance in the Belleville Quinney West market, right? But where you're seeing these loans get negatively amortized to like 90 years, I think there was an example is in these expensive markets, right? Like GTA, uh, Vancouver area where people have bought properties, highly leveraged them on variable rate mortgages, and now their payments have gone up astronomically and they're, they can't even service the interest debt. So that's negative amortization in a nutshell. Hopefully you guys found this video informative. Stay tuned next week for another video. Thanks for watching.